for the benefit of the video, I'm going to recap once again. Daniel 70 weeks. I used this term a lot last week. I thought it would be a good, I thought we needed to take the opportunity to back up and look at Daniel 70th week so that we can start getting an idea of how things fit in this timeline. And so you'd know what I was talking about when I talked about it. You know, there's going to be a lot of this jumping back and forth. We're going to be looking at Daniel some as we study Revelation. We're going to be looking at Matthew. We're going to be looking at First and Second Thessalonians and different prophetic verses throughout. There's more prophecy concerning his second coming than there was the first coming. So, um, you know, we need to look at these things throughout God's Word. So Daniel 70 week, if you've got your Bibles, in Daniel chapter 9, verses 24 through 27, it says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city, to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and the prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and rebuild Jerusalem, and we'll look at that in a minute, until the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and threescore and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall even the even the troublous times and after three score and two weeks shall messiah be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. I probably should have used something other than the King James, because that's a mouthful, ain't it? <laughs> and the King James is good, I, and I, I like the King James in these studies because there's more, there, there's more things out there key. There's more concordances key to the King James and all, and. Uh, but there are some good translations out there that, that translate these things good. So once again, this is a, not a real in-depth study. This is kind of a brief overview. We're going to look at what Daniel's talking about here. What he's done in these verses here, he's laid out a timeline. He, he's been given this prophetic vision of this timeline of things to come. Um, in verse 24, Gabriel t tells him that seven... Seventy-sevens are decreed for you and your holy city. <clears throat> and almost every commentator that you'll find out there agree that the, the seven, seventy-sevens should be understood as, as weeks. <clears throat> or the seventieth week. Let me get my thoughts together. The seventy-sevens, that's just a lot of words back to back for me to use. Seventy-sevens should be understood as <clears throat> as years. The, these 70 weeks of years. So he's saying seven times seven year periods. In other words, a period of 490 years is what we're looking at. Seven times 70 is uh, 490. So 490 years is what we're looking at. So you've got 490 years from, well, we'll, we'll get to that. These verses provide sort of a clock that gives an idea when the Messiah would come and some of the events that would occupy his experience, or his appearance, rather. So this whole thing, from when the trials, tribulation ends, or starts and ends, is 490 years? No. no. We're going to look at that in a minute. From when it begins to the end, is seven years. There's 393 years before that that we've got. Oh, oh so the 70 weeks is not the seven times 70. The 70th week is the last of those seven year periods. The 70th week. But there's 70 weeks total. Oh. 69 of them have already come to pass. And we're going to look at that timeline. And the last one, the 70th one, is futuristic. So uh, <clears throat> so the, the prophecy goes on to divide the 490 years into three smaller units. There's one unit of 49 years that's in there. And, uh, and one year to one of 434 years and then one of seven years. The final week of seven years, we'll see, is divided in half. And we're going to look at all this on a timeline and make a little more sense in a minute. Verse 25 says, From the time the word goes out to restore and rebuild Jerusalem until the anointed one. 
the ruler comes, there will be seven sevens and 62 sevens. So seven sevens is 49 years. 62 sevens is another 434 years, which comes up to <clears throat> 489, uh, four, 483 years. Y'all with me? Yeah. Follow me. Uh, Y'all didn't think you are getting a math lesson in there. <laughs> so we put this on a timeline and we're getting there. So the command to rebuild Jerusalem found in Nehemiah. When you go back and you look in Nehemiah, you see the command to rebuild Jerusalem. That happened around 440 B.C. There, there's a little discrepancies when you look at different timelines and stuff or when you look at different commentaries because we believe that the uh, our calendar, Jesus is, you know, we started our calendar at Jesus' birth. We believe we're off by about four years in our calendar, so there's a little bit of discrepancy there in the in the <coughs> calendar we use today. So you had the command to rebuild Jerusalem, and then the crucifixion of Jesus, that's the, talking about the anointed one, you have that there, that happened around 32, 33 B.C. You've got the church age, and you've got the 70th week. So you've got these years down here, and if you'll do the math, that comes up to 483 years from the command to rebuild Jerusalem to the crucifixion of Jesus. This is going to make more sense as we go on. I see some of the looks on your faces. So when back in Nehemiah, when Nehemiah started rebuilding Jerusalem, that's what Daniel is talking about. Around 444 B.C. Crucifixion of Jesus is when the anointing one was cut off. When Jesus was cut off. Uh, not for his sake, but for others. But, uh, around 33. So you got 483. Those are in the past. We're, we all agree on that, right? But there's another seven year period that is yet to come. And we're going to look at that. And that's what, when I refer to Daniel's 70th week, that's what we're talking about. A lot of people refer to it as a tribulation period. So, broke down a little bit more. The command to rebuild Jerusalem. Remember we had those two periods in there? We had the seven sevens and a half. So, so the 49 years, we had the command to rebuild Jerusalem. Jerusalem is rebuilt. The crucifixion of Jesus. We got the church age and then this future 70th week. So, I gotta ask this question because this blows my mind every time. Remember, these were written by different writers over a long period of time. How did they get this timeline so accurate? I mean, this this when you look at the math here, the math is just astounding that these people that did not know each other wrote different times in history, different places in their lives wrote God's this. It's supposed to be back then. It's exact. That's the only thing it can be. The um, the Bible is so cohesive. It's just so, <clears throat> there's so much in it that if you really study it, you start seeing all these things unfold that make sense throughout. I mean, it, it's just, it's it, the story is consistent throughout. So you've got the 483 years. Now, this is based on a 360-year calendar, 360-day calendar, the old Jewish calendar. We have a 364-point something ain't it ain't that what our so with our calendar if you'll take 483 years it becomes 476 years on our calendar because you know because of the additional days that we add to our calendar this timeline was based on a 360 day calendar so the numbers just make sense I mean if somebody wants to do it take 444 minus or 444 minus 476 and see what you come up with. Um, so I mean, the time between the rebuilding of Jerusalem to Jesus' crucifixion was the 49 year? No, that was the 483 Jewish years. The 49 years was the time to rebuild to when Jerusalem is rebuilt. You know, and all that's chronicled in Nehemiah. You had that 49 years that, the, that Jerusalem was rebuilt and then continue going on. You know, I don't I don't know why exactly that, that Gabriel gave um, gave Daniel that extra bit, but 
if there's no other reason, just prove to us how accurate things are. So. Okay, it was um, 49 years to build the temple and rebuild Jerusalem. Rebuild Jerusalem, it yes. To be yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, Jerusalem is built, and then it was how many years? Another 434 years. 444 years. 34, 30, yes. 434 years. Yes, 434 years. To the cross. From the, what they officially felt like that Jerusalem had been built to the time that Christ was born. Yes. Right. And then the seven years is just kind of sitting out here somewhere. And if we were, uh, you know, it, it's the thing that we're really not supposed to know the true date of. Right. Because this is one event that followed after that next event. And they, they gave him years to it. Yep. So, Okay. So, are we on y'all following as far as this timeline goes so far? Because it gets a little more confusing. Just making sure y'all get this. Uh, it, it takes some study. I mean, I, I said from the get-go, this weren't going to be an easy study. This takes some. I am a little confused. All right. So that's forty-nine years for Jerusalem to be rebuilt. Yes. Four hundred and thirty-four between that time and the time of Jesus' crucifixion. Yes. Yeah, seven years, which is that future, what a lot of people refer to as the tribulation period. So what are, what's the church age? There's church no age is time. where we're at now. It's the age but of grace. There's no time. There's no time on it. The only thing we really know is what Second Peter 3, 9 says. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, and that some count slackness. He's not willing that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. So I, I believe God's years, just waiting. Seven years, is that the seventy? That's the 70th week. The, 70th week. the whole thing combined is the 70 weeks of Daniel. Do you think God's just waiting for everybody to just... No, I think he's waiting for that last person who's going to be saved to be saved. And we don't know who that is. He knows who it's going to be anyway. Well, he, he does, but that's not mine and your business. And he didn't tell us. So yeah. our business is to be the ones that share the gospel. Yeah, you know, so... So... Right, there is no defined time from the cross to that 70th week. The, the Bible doesn't give us a time. That's that church age, that age of grace. That's where we're at right now. Uh, a lot of people try to speculate this. A lot of people have tried to, to put a timeline on it. We don't know. Um, we do know that some things are happening that are lining up and pointing that way. Uh, my old pastor, Brother Lindsay, used to say, if the Lord don't return soon, he's going to have to He's going to have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're in that age of grace. We don't know when that is going to end and when the 70th week starts. But we know that every day we're getting closer. So we, everybody kind of there somewhat now. Uh, and, again, I will send you all this, and I'll send you notes, and I'll answer questions. Um, Verse 26 continues with a prediction that after the Messiah is killed, the people of the ruler who will come come will destroy the city and the sanctuary. This was filled with the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. Um, I can't think of his name now. One of the Roman rulers come in and destroyed the temple right around AD 70. So uh, that happened. I mean, that was fulfilled. That prophecy has been fulfilled. Jerusalem was destroyed. The temple was torn brick to brick, torn down. Uh, I've heard, I don't know if it's true, but I've heard it was to the point where they tore the bricks apart and melted the gold out of them. But I, I've never seen no nothing by any of the historians that really indicated that. But I've been told that, and I, I wouldn't state that as fact anyway. Um, so of the 77s that we looked at, 69 of them have been fulfilled in history. So this leaves one more seven yet to be fulfilled. We've talked about that. Um, <clears throat> Daniel's prophecy reveals some of the actions of the Antichrist, the ruler who will come. In verse 27, he says, and he will confirm a covenant with, with many for one seven. So there's going to be some kind of covenant, some kind of um, peace treaty, something um, that, that kicks off this 70th week. You know, it might happen a little bit before. It could be signed and then not go into effect. I don't know. Uh, it's going to happen to right there at the beginning or just before the beginning. There's going to be some kind of sign thing. 
I now again I, I try not to inject opinion a lot but this is opinion I'll let you know when it's when it's opinion my opinion is that this might have something to do with that big mosque that's sitting on Mount Moriah right now um, right now there's a big is Islamic mosque there there's no temple we know a temple's got to be built because we know the Antichrist desolates the temple in the 70th week, which we're going to look at in a minute. So I think it might have something to do with that to allow them to rebuild the temple on the same ground that that mosque is on now. Uh, but I don't know that. Yeah. Tim Lahey, I think, uses a story in his Left Behind series, and again, that's not, if that's where you've got your theology from, <laughs> you need to, you really need to be studying this with us. Um, I think he uses a story about some kind of, they, the Jews had invented some kind of fertile ground or something, some kind of fertilizer, I don't remember what it was, but something that was real, that helped with producing food or something. So it could be something that speculative. Or I think it had more to do with, with God's children. And um, I think it had more to do with that sibling rivalry that's going on over there than <clears throat> so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it would. This is possibly be the time whenever the uh, Antichrist sort of makes peace with everybody. Yes. So religion, all one yes. religion type thing. That's a good point. This Antichrist ain't gonna come in here as some ugly dude that's mm -hmm. you know raring and raging and you know just starting everything. He's gonna come in as a symbol of peace. He's gonna come in winning everybody over. He's not going to reveal himself till later. So he's going to bring in this peace treaty. There's going to be, you know, there's going to be these times of prosperity. He's going to bring people together. You know, we're going to have this one world religion and we'll have this one world currency and it's going to be like he's just putting together this utopia almost. There's a new world order, so to speak. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, basically, it's, it's, it's socialism is what it'll be. Um, so, um, you know, all that's going to happen. I mean, he, that's why, you know, that's why I'm leery of any politician. I, I don't get on board and just rant and rave over them. I'll support different ones, but I just don't get crazy over them because the Bible teaches us this guy's going to be a deceiver. It's going to be a deceiver, big time. So, um, so, all right, so now we get to the 70th week itself. So we've looked at that timeline. So we're in the 70th week. We're in the last seven years. We know that's going to start with some kind of treaty. Um, you know, the 70th week, I've got in there, it's referred to a lot of times as a tribulation period. That's not a biblical term for it. It's just a term that's used. There is a great tribulation within the 70th week that we'll see later on. Again, you've got to go back to Matthew 24 and Mark to see that. But... Um, there is a great tribulation in here. A lot of people refer to this as the tribulation period. The biblical name for it would be Daniel's 70th week, that future week that's yet to come. So in the 70th week, this timeline is just that 70th week I'm looking at. So we see the beginning down here. <clears throat> the end of it, down here, end of Daniel's 70th week, we know that period seven years, 360 day years, 2,520 days. We know in the middle of it, there's going to be an abomination of desolation. He told us that in Matthew, I think, or Daniel 9, I think it was verse 27. He says, talks about the, <clears throat> that future Antichrist that's going to desolate the temple. He's going to be in a, bring an abomination, a desolation in on the temple. That could be something, slaughtering a pig, an unclean animal in the temple. You know, Jews take that very seriously. Regardless, he's going to reveal himself at the midpoint of who he really is. So what you're going to see in the book of Revelation is, and you see this in Matthew and all as well, you see a progression. You're going to see a progression. You're going to see things start really good. You know, you got this ruler that's come in. He's woed everybody. He's brought everybody together, and it's just this big communist country uh, you know I, I think he's going to be a one world thing I mean it's it's not going to be a president he might be an under thing or something but this guy's going to be a world ruler 
and uh, he's going to bring in this peace and he's going to bring in all this stuff and then you're going to see a progression and it's going to progressively get worse and progressively get worse and it's going to get badder and badder and badder if that's correct English which I know it's not but I don't know the right stuff um, worse worser and badder um, <laughs> until we get to this midpoint and then he's going to reveal himself for who he really is and then what we'll see we're going to see a wrath of Satan that occurs in there. Revelation 12, 12, if you want to look that up later. There, there's a wrath of Satan that occurs. And uh, you're going to see it really get bad. I believe this is the period when the mark's going to be given out. You know, you'll hear talk about the mark. We're going to talk about the mark later. I will tell you this, people get scared about everything with the mark now. You know, if it's a credit card or whatever it is, people get scared about it. I don't believe the mark is going to be something you're tricked into taking because the Bible is real intentional and, and let you know that you take this mark, there's no going back. And God has never tricked anybody in their salvation. So I think it's going to be a deliberate decision to, to bow down to this ruler when you take that mark. You're, you're, going, to, you're going to submit your loyalty to him. Now, are, we still, are we still there? Or we I believe we are. Some people tell you you're not. I believe we are. Uh, if they're right, hallelujah, praise God, we're out of here and we don't have to see it. If they're wrong, we're not prepared. Right. So we need to know all sides of this. Um, so the midpoint, he's going to reveal himself, the abomination of desolation. You'll hear that spoke of. Uh, I believe Paul calls it that in 2 Thessalonians 2. Um <clears throat> And then we've got another three and a half years. And we'll, we're going to look at this timeline here more in depth as we go on. We're not doing an in-depth of this. We're going to do a lot more layout. We're going to put the seals and the wrath and all that in there later. But right now, I just wanted to give you an idea of what we're looking at that 70th week. These three are givens. These three we know. We know the beginning. We know that there's a midpoint where he, nobody argues over this. It's very clear. <clears throat> Let me, let me rephrase it. No uh, dispensationalist, premillennial type people argue over this. And that we believe all this is in the future, the 70th week and all. And we believe it's literal. So um, we, none argue over this. And then the end point, nobody argues over with. And then past that, we see the millennial kingdom. There's some other things that happen right after it, but just for sake of keeping it simple tonight, I've just got the Millennial Kingdom outside of after that. So. Would you read, um, read your first point there? Oh, the beginning of 70th week, sometimes referred to as the Tribulation period. Okay, and then the middle one there. So. Abomination and Desolation, three and a half years or 1260 days. Okay. And then the end of Daniel 70th week. So, and then again, I've just got up here. The rest of the chart will fill in as we study the 70th week. So, right, y'all, have y'all followed that timeline somewhat? Yeah, I got it. So, right. just to ask a question. That's what we want to do. Is there a verse 26 mm -hmm. where it says, and after three score and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off and there will be a flood and war desolation. Yeah. So I'm not sure about the flood. That? I'm not sure about the flood. I'll be honest with you. I'm not sure about the flood. The flood part. Uh, I, I think that I might be talking about and I need to go back. I meant to look at that because I knew somebody would ask me about that tonight. Okay. And I meant back to go back and study that some more. I think that might be talking about uh, when they destroyed the temple and all, but I'm not positive. But I will look up that answer. And I'll, I'll the three score in two weeks. So is that talking about um, the seven years? So three, three score would be 60, and then two more would be 14. So that's 74. So 70, right? My math. That's a three score. Wait. Weeks. Somebody got something other than a King James. They can read that from and see what it says. Uh, 
Uh, Billy, will you turn that? Yeah. You turn that. The phone. The video. Will you turn that? No. After the sixty-three and sevens, the anointed on the stand will be put to death and will have nothing. The people of the newer who will come will destroy 